Well, good evening, everybody. It's uh, it's Paul here. It's the uh, Thursday, the third of March, twenty sixteen. We've uh, we've already uh, already into the third month of the year after a rather uh, volatile January and February. I uh, trust I trust the markets and uh, this volatility has treated you well. Um, this evening, ladies and gentlemen, what we're going to do is we're actually going to talk about hedge fund strategies. Before I uh, kick into that, we always begin with a quick risk disclaimer. Hopefully you can uh, hear my voice and that you can uh, see the slides there. Uh, as always, CFDs and FX are leveraged products and carry a high level of risk to your capital. It is possible to lose more than your initial deposit and you may be required to make further payments. These products may not be suitable for all clients, so please ensure you fully understand risks involved. So hedge fund strategies, ladies and gentlemen, what am I going to cover for this uh, for this session this evening? Well, I'll talk a little bit about actually how hedge funds operate and what they actually are. Some of you may be very au fait with what a hedge fund is. Others may have heard the name, but actually have no idea what a hedge fund is or how it operates. I'll talk a little bit about the strategies and the sort of styles that they use. And then in particular, what we'll start to do is to look at boiling down and to see if, if any of those particular strategies that can be used by, by private traders like ourselves. What we'll do is we'll have a look at uh, a few examples, and then I'm going to finish up with a, uh, with a nice uh, little uh, um, sort of uh, hedge fund strategy for you to be able to take away and work with and utilize in your own trading. And then as always, I'll uh, just uh, round up. I'll happily take any Q&A that you may have uh, at the end of the session. So, ladies and gentlemen, what is a what is a hedge fund? Well, you know, there's there's lots of definitions of it, and you know, you you, you know, with the uh, wonderful powers of Google, you can find out all kind of uh, manner of uh, information on hedge funds from both the uh, from let's say from the negative and the positive side. But invariably, what we tend to look at as a hedge fund is that it's an investment fund that, that pools capital from a from a limited number of investors. And the important element is, uh, up until recently, that it's usually just available to sophisticated investors. Invariably, sort of down the uh, the history of hedge funds, they were only open to to certain, let's say, certain individuals. Normally, though, people who would be uh, uh, sort of described by regulators as sophisticated invest the kind of the, the way that that uh, you know the importance of that means is that invariably it means you know hedge funds are, are funded by private money and the flip side of that is that you know if a hedge fund struggles or collapses then invariably there's you know there's little or no bailout for those investors it's not like the banks when they um, you know when they ran into trouble during the financial crash Along with that, what they'll do is they'll also use leverage levels that are beyond what we would normally associate with regulated entities like, like mutual funds or banks. Uh, originally, what was happened was hedge funds were there, as the name implies, we used to hedge positions. They would do a, a lot of things called uh, spread trading, and, and invariably they would use that to hedge positions that, that they may already have in their, uh, in their particular uh, directional book. But what's actually happened over the over the last so 20, 30 years is that those hedge funds that they grew into funds that aim for a positive return, regardless of whether markets are rising or falling. And then very often that's termed as absolute return within uh, within finance sector, within markets. And that's different from what you might hear as someone offering a, a relative return in terms of, you know, the, the return on the fund is relative to the actual uh, to the actual market. So if the market is down 10 percent, but the uh, the fund is only down 6 percent, that they would deem that as a uh, they would deem that as a successful year. Well, hedge fund, its aim is absolute return. Its aim is to generate you know, positive returns regardless of what markets are, are, are doing. Variably, that allowed um, markets to hedge funds to be able to both go long and short of the market. And what we've also seen is that over the last uh, few years is that in terms of the uh, the, the markets and styles, that hedge funds have, have diversified to, to be able to operate in all manner of different styles, utilizing all manner of different derivatives in, in their terms to, to leverage their position to, to head for those, uh, you know, for those positive returns. 
So what actually happens is you start to look at these uh, hedge fund investment styles. What are they? Well, you know, if you've uh, if you've ever seen a prospectus for for a hedge fund, or you know, as as let's say hedge funds come out of the dark and into the let's say the everyday uh, the everyday light of of you know of the normal retail investor, you'll see that they talk about their particular investment styles, and you know, you can you can read all the the sort of sort of typical investment styles they have from convertible arbitrage, dedicated short buyers, distressed securities, emerging markets, equity market neutral, event driven, fixed income arbitrage, funds of funds, global macro, long short equity, managed future strategies and statistical arbitrage. Now, of course, some of you will be able to read them and understand that, but some of you may have absolutely no idea what any of those particular uh, investment styles mean, and you may, you, know, you may be none the wiser in that particular case. What I'm going to do is I'm going to start to break them down into the sort of, let's say, the four main styles that um, that you'll see within hedge funds. And then within that, we'll start to look at, you know, whether they are, uh, whether their particular styles and strategies are actually open and available and, and um, uh, provide opportunity for ourselves as private traders. Well, if you look at uh, you know you're breaking it down into into actual strategies, what you'll find is that you know the, the majority of them are are using one of these kind of five sort of styles, one of these five strategies. They're either trend following, which you might heard be described as global macro directional. Very often you'll speak about mean reversion, which is really just talking about relative value. I'm going to cover that a little bit more in a, in a few slides down the uh, down the line. Arbitrage, which is uh, sometimes you'll see it described as relative value or event driven. Scalping, which you may well have heard of, you may be aware of, you may even uh, you know, engage with yourself, which is event driven. And finally, you know, as recent, it is high frequency trading, which can be around event driven or, or relative um, value ideas. So, you know, it, regardless of, you know, the previous slide, there might be lots of, uh, let's say, uh, lots of uh, uh, you know financial uh, jargon and acronyms really you start to break it down into the those kind of like five various strategies and then we start to look at you know in kind of those four areas that macro directional relative value event driven those really are you know the, the when you boil them all down that's the kind of crux of what we're looking at so you know when you look at hedge fund strategy trend following well the, the truth is you probably already know that in fact the vast majority of private traders are already engaged in elements of, of trend following and, and you know for a definition of it these strategies follow general trends in a set of data by comparing historical and current prices profiting whether prices go up or down you know and the important thing for ourselves is you know is, is that really suitable for a private trader well well yes yes it is and as i said you know whether you're already an intraday trader or a longer term trader the likelihood is that you know the majority of you are doing you know trend following strategies of one form or another Hopefully you can uh, see this particular slide. And here's you know, an example of a trend following strategy. Okay, so this is the uh, chart of the S&P 500. Uh, it's a weekly chart, so every every candlestick represents a, a week of data. Uh, and what you can see is for you know for the last few years, especially starting to get in sort of into 2012, 2013, then invariably you know what you'll find is the big hedge fund strategies, which is following uh, you know a lot of them are just following a very simple trend following strategy and it was as simple as btd by the dip so you know you switch on bloomberg you switch on cnbc you see some uh, silver haired fox from uh, from a fancy sounding uh, you know capital company you know which is a hedge fund the vast majority of these guys were just basically buying the dip every time the s&p came back down you know they would buy the dip and those those arrows sort of point out some of the opportunities that um, that were provided. And so, you know, invariably, you know, what you'll find is lots of private traders can actually operate like that. They may operate in, in maybe different time frames or different markets, but invariably just buying the dip or selling the rallies as, as a means to to follow a, an overall trend following strategy is what you'll is what you'll find lots and lots of traders are very happy to. So, you know, it just you see that, that, you know, the great thing about trend following strategy is it it works exceptionally well in a strong clear trend like we've like we had there in the s p up until sort of the second half of last year invariably the downside is you know you need to to know when that uh, you know when the trend is over so to speak and you know i think uh, you know looking at s p we're probably going to get a little bit of uh, an answer on that over the next couple of weeks uh, so it's uh, something to definitely keep your eye on next uh, strategy i want to talk about is is 
is mean reversion. All right. And what does that mean? Well, the philosophy behind these strategies is that instruments have an average price over time. They use historical data to compute an average price. Well, what does that actually mean to the to the, the average trade in the street? Well, what you'll find is that markets will over, they will always overshoot and undershoot. And invariably, once they do that, you'll find that they will revert to a mean. They will come back to what is deemed to be a, a fair value. Now, of course, you know, everyone has their own definition of what fair value is, but you'll hear people, you know, in traders and hedge funds talk about mean reversion strategy. Is that uh, suitable for private traders? Well, yes, yes, it is. And, uh, you know, I, I trade many mean reversion strategies myself, as well as uh, trend following strategies. And it can be part of a, a portfolio of strategies that you use to, to effectively trade through whatever market environment the, uh, you find that the major markets the major markets are in. So as a, you know, as an as an example of that, here's uh, an example, just you know, a very simple one on the, the you know the US thirty, the Dow Jones. This is a thirty minute chart using the the green, which is the two hundred moving average as the, as the mean, as the indicator of fair value. Uh, and what you'll see there is every time you know there's a little green ellipse. Well, that's where it's showing you that, as I said, that the market is either overshot or undershot. Now there's many different ways that that private traders prop traders, institutional traders, hedge fund traders may use to define what it means by effectively, you know, an instrument being overbought or oversold. But invariably, you know, what they're always looking at is once they've decided that instrument is overbought or oversold, they're looking for it to revert. I mean, and, and you'll see there that I think on, I think all but one of those uh, specific examples, every time price got overbought uh, or, you know, or oversold, invariably it would revert back to the green 200 period moving average invariably it would just you know it would be oversold and then invariably it would buy back up to the 200 period moving average within that example the 200 period moving average is what is you see as the fair value okay and what happens is we see price just constantly reverts to the mean that's what it's always doing The next one of those hedge fund strategy is something called arbitrage. Uh, and these strategies depend upon speed to catch price imbalances between different markets. What, once again, what does that actually mean to the, uh, to the normal trader in the street? Well, let's, uh, let's go back a little bit. Let's go back maybe a, a hundred years as a, to, to provide an example. It might be a little bit easier. So uh, we're, uh, you know, we're a trader in America and we have, you know, the, we have the, uh, we have the, the Chicago, the Chicago, the Seabolt, the Chicago um, uh, trade floors open up and the, the New York trading floors open up. And they're, for example, trading the, the price of silver. And when uh, Chicago opens up, they are pricing silver at, let's say, $14. Uh, and New York are pricing uh, silver at $16. Now, invariably, what you would find is arbitrage traders would look to, to effectively trade that imbalance between and different prices for uh, for the same instrument, but on different markets. So the people in Chicago pricing, uh, you know, we have priced the uh, silver at fourteen dollars. What you'll find they'll do, they'll buy silver. The people in New York, seeing that uh, silver there is priced at sixteen dollars, they will sell silver. The idea being that invariably price will, as, as more price comes into the market, more orders are. Uh, uh, are you know transacted that day the price will probably come back to its mean value of, a, of around let's say fifteen dollars and so that's what they would actually do and use that to people to, to you know, buy at 14 sell at 16 and when it comes in the middle that's when they would look to to close out for a profit now maybe that was easily done you know let's say a hundred years ago in, in the in the modern trading age where you know we have interconnected markets where we have you know the really the the, the latency and the speed of transaction is, is exceptionally fast you know arbitrage still works and you'll still find you know lots of hedge funds uh, you know especially up to a couple of years ago, use a great deal of uh, what they call stat arb statistical arbitrage but invariably really it, it's it's whilst it's you know it is still going on and still have in terms of it being suitable for a private traders as one of their own hedge fund strategies well 
I would say, you know, you can do it, but realistically, it, it's not a real, um, it's not a real long term sort of a trading opportunity for a private trader, unless you're able to, to, to have an informational edge, or, you know, you're able to trade at, you know, at exceptionally large size, whereby, you know, that that sort of, you know, one or two ticks in your, uh, in your favor is what will, you know, be able to, to sort of uh, pull in a, a, a greater profit value. So as a general rule, for most private traders, it's important for you to know what arbitrage is, to know it when you see it in markets, but to trying to be able to trade that, it is a, is a, you know, it's a bit of a, it's a bit of a hard ask. One of the next strategies is scalping. Now you'll find that most private traders have heard of scalping because you know it, it's it's seen everywhere, and you know these strategies act like market makers, like small profits on profits on differences in the, in the bid and the ask spread. Uh, is that suitable for private traders? Well, yes, it is, but you know I I, I would have a few caveats and talk a little bit more about that down the uh, down the line. But invariably, you'll find you know heads. Even market makers, banks, prop shops, they will all be involved in, in scalping time strategies, trying to trying to uh, you know take a, a few pips, or a few pips or a few points profit on a uh, or, you know constantly throughout throughout the day, and, and you know with uh, private traders and with you know the the ability that uh, they have in terms of the technology and in terms of the spreads and the feeds that they get these days, then there is you know there is a suitable method to be able to to trade. But as I said, a few caveats, and they will come out as I as I talk through uh, one of the little scalping strategies that I want to to provide with you to to be able to take away and work with. So uh, here's a little example from uh, try to sort of get a very relevant relevant example. So this is actually from uh, last night in the the Aussie dollar, uh, and it's uh, this is a one minute chart, but you'll find you know scalpers will go down to you know even to sort of tick charts. Very small, very fast. What you're seeing there is a it's a one minute chart of the uh, the Aussie dollar. Um, we were due to have some uh, Aussie dollar uh, news out here, which is the uh, where you might see the here uh, we go. Let's see, we might see where the the, the second arrow is. But actually, what had happened is uh, you know a couple of hours before we we'd had a we'd had a small gap. Okay, you might be able to. See, I'm hoping you can see that. We'd see we had a little small gap in the Aussie dollar, uh, and then basically price came out here. This is when the news came out. Price basically popped up, popped up into that area. Those of you who've been trading a long time will know that you know gaps as a general rule tend to fill. Nature abhors a vacuum, so whenever there is one, it will always move to fill that, and that's what happens in financial markets. And so, what you know, the, the, let's say the the savvy and smart and prepared scalper would have been ready to to see as that basically price moved up into that area to then what they would call fade that they were looking to 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 fade that initial move, uh, and then variably price moved down over the next uh, few minutes. Price moved down in the next few minutes, okay, until it actually found this level here. And that level was the effectively the lows of the session. And then invariably what you've seen is scalpers stepping in to, to trade through that themselves and invariably using as an opportunity to, to scalp a few points on to the north side. Uh, and then actually the price moved on and moved up very, very nicely. So you can take a little look at that, go back and have a look on your uh, MT4 and you're able to, to actually, you know, sort of a play through that yourself. But invariably those scalpers were there just to, to look to try and take a, a few points both on the, on the let's say on the north and the south side based on having a, a plan around what was going to happen on, on an event driven uh, opportunity there to, to trade that news. So uh, one of the final ones is is high frequency trading. You know, you'll hear about it a lot. It's in the news a great deal. And this is about operating in that millisecond level. Uh, these strategies are using arbitrage or scalping techniques, but at, at high volumes and, and super fast speeds. This is where people are operating you know, at that millisecond level. And, and the honest truth is, is that, you know, trying to operate as a, as a HFT uh, hedge fund it isn't really suitable for, uh, for private traders, not unless you have, you know, an, an immense amount of uh, capital to, to invest in the infrastructure, because it's just a, it's an absolute arms race there between HFT hedge funds, invariably as they, as they always try to, um, trying to go to grab for, uh, you know, extra, extra pace in their, uh, in their trading strategies. However, what you do is, you know, you need to be aware of HFTs, you need to be aware of where they operate and how they operate, you need to 
be aware of you know if you're for example a scalper you'd need to be aware of you know what are the uh, what are the, the 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 challenges that you may have if you're getting in front of a, a of you know a, a bunch of hfts So having gone through those, you know, those kind of those five, you know, strategies, the question is, well, as I said, what can we use as private traders? Well, trend following is 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 available for private traders to use. And, and the good thing is that, you know, trend following is available across all of the time frames. So whether you are trading one minute or you're trading dailies or weekly to monthlies, you know, it, it's as a strategy, it's there and it's available and you can use it across all time frames that suit your, let's say, your own particular trading style. In terms of uh, mean reversion, well, yeah, that is also available to, to you to consider as, as a, one of your hedge fund trading strategies. And once again, that is also available on, on all of the time frames. So, you know, I myself have traded mean reversion on, you know, five minute charts and also on daily and weekly charts. You know, there is always an element of mean reversion going on. Uh, and finally, the one scalping. Well, you know, scalping is available. But realistically, you know, you're looking at that, doing that on on the intraday, you know, uh, intraday time frame. So, you know, th this is what we're looking at. You know, fifteen, five, one minute, even down to the uh, tick charts. All right, don't don't be trying to scalp off the the daily chart or the weekly chart. You know, you're just not uh, you're not prepared correctly. So what I'm going to uh, sort of uh, provide you with here is I thought I'd give something a little bit different, something the, the bare bones of a, yeah, of a hedge fund strategy that you could take away and you could work with and you could look and, and try to utilize yourself. And it's, and it's, it's a primarily a scalping strategy and uh, you'll hear it. You'll sometimes hear me call it the big figure trade or the big level trade. You let me call it the BLT, okay, the big level trade. And, and as it says, it's just a very simple scalping strategy that you'll find hedge funds and market makers and dealers will use every single day. And what it does is it combines event driven and relative value styles. What does that mean? Well, you know, very often if there's an event driven uh, a piece of news that's coming out, well, that's a, that's an opportunity to, to to use this. Or if we're looking at relative value, well, we look at particular levels, a particular big level. Well, that might be an opportunity for uh, for the, an element of mean reversion to go on as we look to as we look to fade a particular particular move. So let's have a look at the uh, let's have a look at the setup. So how do we identify a setup? Well, what we're really looking for is we're looking for a particular market that's trending towards a key psychological level. What do I mean by a key psychological level? Well, preferably what you'll find is you know the, the, the truth is humans are, are tend to be pretty lazy in where they place their orders. So we tend to place our orders at psychological levels, which invariably are net round number levels. So you know, ten dollars or fifteen dollars or twenty dollars, you know, or up to the you know on a let's say on an FX pair it might be one twenty seven handle, one twenty eight handle. S and P will be at particular uh, uh, particular handles as well. So invariably, what happens? is that as humans are quite lazy they, they basically place their orders around key psychological levels and then invariably it becomes a a, a self-fulfilling prophecy the dealers the hedge funds that you know they know where those orders are likely to be we have to remember in things like you know for dealers and market makers you know they only get paid paid they only get paid when orders get triggered so they're always going to be interested where the greatest uh bet you know the greatest number of orders are placed and invariably a lot of that will be around those kind of the, the big levels the big numbers so what you'll find is if there's a lot of orders there there's a higher probability of a reaction once price reaches it therefore what that does is it provides you with an opportunity to trade like a hedge fund and scalp away as price hits those particular levels So I thought I'd take a uh, another sort of a uh, session from today, okay? That you could uh, look at that uh, worked very very nicely. This is silver, all right? It's uh, you might see it as a XAG USD on on the VT MT4 platform, but what's actually been happening here is 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 fifteen dollars has been a uh, a key psychological big level in silver for for a while now, and what we've seen uh, this week and 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 last week. Is that invariably that 15 level has, has just been provided a you know a fantastic level to 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 do the BLT trade off okay uh, hopefully what you can see is you know we've you know the, there's uh, there's been a few reactions to it there I'm going to talk a little bit more uh, about it in terms of if I 
what I've done is I've gone down to the gone down to the five minute chart here. Just gone down to the very five minute chart on the you know you can see where that fifteen dollar level is. Okay, it's a key psychological level, and what you'll have seen is yesterday. Okay, towards the end of the session, invariably whenever price touched it, there was a reaction. Okay, invariably I'd I would count that as effectively four touches of that level. Today we've had one and we've had two before it blew through on the third attempt. OK, but really, you can hopefully see that in the, that that level, that key psychological level, there was always a reaction there. And it's that reaction that hedge fund traders, market makers and now you can use, utilize to, uh, to to scalp away around. So once you've identified this to set your orders, so you're going to do this, you're going to sell or buy one element at the figure so at the actual number in that silver case that's 15 dollars second one what you'll do is you'll sell the second element the second part of your trade at five pips above the figure and then you'll also have an order to sell the third element at 10 pips over the figure all the stops are set for 20 pips over the figure with a profit target for two thirds two thirds of your position to be out at five pips below the level Remember, we're scalping here. We're not looking to try and identify the direction. We're not looking to try and hit a home run. We're not trying to, to sort of um, pick the absolute top or bottom in a move. All we're looking to do is to operate like a hedge fund or a, you know, a market maker and actually scalp away and generate a few profits, uh, a few pips profit for ourselves. So, as I said, what we had here was, you know, we had uh, certain moves here yesterday that actually happened. We had four of them that I counted, and then we had two of them before we crossed through, okay? We pushed through, and then invariably prices are pushed on this afternoon. And if you were to look at silver now, okay, on the five minute chart, and if you uh, if you had the particular strategies, you'll actually see it setting up as a as a little mean reversion, okay, another other hedge fund, if you look at that later on this evening. But that's what we we're looking at, those orders, to be set those orders at that 15 level as you start your session, you start your trading day, uh, and invariably you will have that to, to invariably to, to have the orders at those things. You set those orders, and then as I said, you're looking to actually get most of you out. If, you, if the position gets laddered, you're looking to have them out at about five pips for the two thirds of it. And the reason being, as I said, we're looking to scalp a few pips profit. That's what we're looking to achieve. So what are the few keys to that trade? Well, you know, you need to be prepared ahead of time and stay vigilant. It's not that you know, it's not that hard if you're if you're doing good analysis every day, you'll be able to identify those key levels in, in key markets. If the trade doesn't work out immediately, as in, a, you know, if you've not already hit your targets within 15 minutes, then just get out. All right. We're not trying to be a superstar here. We're not trying to impose our will or our view on the market. It's very simply, you know, if, if it doesn't work, you know, pretty much straight away, then we get out. And although the moves are similar and near most round numbers, this trade setup works best when, you know, you're at the end of a bit of a, a sort of a, a, a intraday trending move and it's coupled with a very, very strong psych number. Very strong sign number. So we're in silver there, you know, that number $15. Okay. So it's a big number, it's a strong number. And invariably, we knew there was going to be lots of orders around that. The sort of little extra piece that advanced traders may, you know, take on board is that what you can also do is, you know, look at those levels at, at the previous day's highs and lows on big news days. I won't go into that too much, but if you've got a bit of experience and knowledge, you should be able to sort of take this uh, this kind of setup and start to, to utilize and, and meld it to your own trading style. Remember, we aren't trying to predict the future. We're just riding the hedge funds and the market makers coattails. We're not trying to be a superstar here. We're in it for a quick few pips. That is by the very nature of it, a scalp. And here's the very key sort of risk management element that there are, you never have more than two attempts in any one day. What does that mean? Well, when we see that you're here, you know, we had the yesterday's session, you'd have been able to take this trade, you'd have been able to take this trade here, but then actually the sort of the third and the fourth, you wouldn't have been able to take them because we have a very, very strict risk management, money management uh, uh, principle, namely we only take two attempts every day. 
The reason being is that any level like this will actually will always break. It will normally break eventually. Here today, you can take the first one, you can take the second one, and then that's you done for the day. And it's a good job too today because you can see it blew north on the third attempt. It's not unusual. It's not unusual if you're testing a level and it's going to break, if it's going to break on the third or fourth attempt, and so we don't want to do that. Now, of course, yesterday, people might say, well, you know, Paul, there was a third and a fourth attempt there that we could have made profit on. That's what we're doing looking back in hindsight. At that time, you wouldn't know. So what I always say is you have a very, very strict risk management principle. That you're only allowed to do that trade two times on one day. Second, first attempt, you can trade it. Second attempt, you can trade it out. After that, no more. Reasons is, is that if it is a strong level, then what I'm expecting is I'm expecting most of the orders to have been cleared out by the after the second attempt. Think about that. You know, I said you know at the start of it, you know, it's where the most orders are placed. So by the second attack, okay, the end of the second attack on that level, I'm expecting most of the orders to, to have to have been cleared out. So in terms of level of resistance, it's not going to be there. And as you can see there from today, on that third attempt, effectively it just sailed through. It went through it like a knife through butter. And we don't want to be on that. So, ladies and gentlemen, to, to kind of finish up, a few final points that, you know, hedge funds are absolute return funds. They're looking to generate positive alpha, positive return, regardless of the market conditions. They have many, many different investment styles, and you shouldn't really get too bogged down in the, uh, in the jargon or the acronyms that are used. The important thing is that, you know, boiling all of those different investment styles, boiling all of those, you know, that um, that jargon down, we're left with sort of three strategies that private traders can take away and work with. Those being trend following, mean reversion and scalping. And the, the BLT trade, uh, the big level trade that we've just talked about is a scalping strategy that hedge funds and dealers and market makers use. And hopefully now, with a little bit of practice, you'll be able to take away and use yourself. So I hope you found that uh, useful and interesting. There's uh, certainly lots there for you to, to take away and, and consider. Some of you may already be trading like a hedge fund, as I said. Some of you may be trading through trend following. Some of you may have been trading mean version, but not really understood a, what it was, how it worked, B, how particular hedge funds used. Some of you may have scalped, but may not have had a particular plan around it. And I hope with that BLT trade, you have a little particular, a little simple uh, sort of uh, um, sandbox strategy that you can take away and actually have a look at and, and utilize and, and melt your own trading styles. So I hope you found that useful. If you've got any particular questions, I'll, I'll happily take them. Uh, if not, then I uh, I wish you the very best of success in your uh, in your own trading, uh, and I hope that you uh, enjoy the uh, the volatility of NFP tomorrow. Thank you. Thank you, Raider. That's very kind of you. Please feel uh, free to fire away with your question, Raider. I'll see if I can answer it. A radar asks, is there a link or a group where we can join an education program we may be offering? Well, if if um, Radar, if you look at the, the value trades page um, on there, you'll find that there's a there's a whole uh, list of uh, videos that will give you a uh, an insight into value trades and also utilizing the MT4 program. And there is also the the 
the archive section of all of the, the videos that um, myself and my colleagues provide uh, there. And as as, uh, as as my support colleague is saying, if you also email them, support at valuetrades.com, they'll, they'll be very happy to, uh, they'll be very happy to, to help and advise you with that radar. Um, you're very welcome, Paul. You're welcome, Ray. I hope you uh, I hope you all found that very useful. Um, you're very welcome, Nina. Thank you for joining us. You're very welcome, Alvin. Thank you. Thanks for the feedback. Hope to see you at the next one. You're very welcome, Silvano. Thank you as well. Yeah, hopefully we'll hear from me soon enough and uh, I hope to see you at the next session.